Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Post Status Draft. I've got a special episode today. I've been working with my friend, talking with my friend, Jesse Friedman, for over a year now. Increasingly, the conversations have got like, we got to do something together about something he said in an interview last year with me about um, WordPress hosting, specifically on this podcast, and it rang my bell. And so, Jesse, welcome back to po Post Status Draft. I'm really eager to talk about what we're going to do new together in just a minute. Would you, would you tell me a little bit, tell everybody a little bit about yourself? Yeah, thanks for having me. And uh, man, I'm excited to be embarking on uh, a fun ride here. Uh, so I'm Jesse Friedman. I uh, work at Automatic. I run uh, partnerships for uh, Jetpack, and I also run uh, WP Cloud, which is a new or newer um cloud that is uh 100% WordPress focused. So we were talking before we started recording that we've known each other at least 10 years now. Um, I right. remember me meeting you in New York City and it's crazy how long how, how long I've been in the industry and then people I know and I go, how long have I really known them and going back a decade? Um, when we kind of connected last year, it the the spur of it was what's this thing called WP Cloud? But in that episode, you said so, something that, like I said, rang my bell, and it was that if a WordPress hosting um, customer churns, we potentially churn a WordPress user. That was the tip of all the iceberg for all of this is it really resonated and go, holy cow, we, we got to really think about this. And from you know here's my perspective real quick on the wordpress hosting industry in particular is i've been in wordpress let's say 16 17 years now when you started it was the five minute you know cpanel fantastico quick start like you could get a website going very very fast wordpress was an is and was an amazing tool for doing that over my time running products talking to customers and agencies and different people that use wordpress um, and even at iThemes going back, we go, there's a couple of prerequisites you need to even be a plugin or theme customer. You got to have probably a domain name, I guess. But really, it was like you have to have WordPress hosting or hosting, and then you have to have WordPress installed on that for even to be our customer. And to us, it really rang deeply because we go, that's out of our control. But that hosting layer is so monumental. And I think, Jesse, my impression is, I don't know, I think we consciously understand that as a community, but the, the, the deep value of making sure that component in WordPress is absolutely critical. So that, that was the thing that got me. I was like, you and I yeah. kept talking about this at CloudFest last year in Austin and then on numerous calls for, for the rest up until this. And, uh, so tell me your perspective about that. And one, one quick thing is, and then what I've seen over 16, 17 years is like the ebb and flow of hosting quality. You got, it's just cyclical almost, I see within hosting companies, really good. And then you have a dip and then it gets corrected and it comes back up. And I can, you know, we all know the names. All of the hosting companies go through this. They got a high, everything is awesome. People are super happy. Product is awesome. Uh, support is awesome and inevitably it takes a little bit of a turn and then it gets corrected and it comes back up and you know we've seen in the industry specifically a ton of um, new startups and entrants into wordpress hosting and then we've seen a ton of mergers and acquisitions it seems to have slowed now but those are kind of some perspectives for me but i want your perspective on wordpress hosting uh, generally sp speaking in your perspective yeah so there's a lot in there and uh that's <laughs> great because it's a uh, it's a lot to unpack so um steer me in the right direction if i start going into you know <laughs> uh weird left fields here but uh yeah so 10 years ago um you and i were uh, uh getting to know each other for the first time and uh, i was working on a company or on a product called uh, brew protect uh which actually is uh featured in the art there. Uh, we sold that company to Automatic in 2014. Uh, and ever since, I've been working very closely with hosting companies um, and uh, third parties outside of Automatic as a partnership wrangler. 
Um, that's evolved a lot in, in, uh, in that time. And, uh, you know, I've gotten to know the community. I've gotten to know the people. I've come from, uh, you know, a background in WordPress that started with me building websites. Uh, I taught it at a university um, and encouraged a lot of students of mine to, uh, to engage in WordPress and grow in the community. In fact, uh, it's amazing when I go to a WordCamp and somebody walks up to me um, and they were like, hey, I was a student of yours, you know, 10 years ago, five years ago, whatever it might have been. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, you've really made an impact on, on, on me because I joined the WordPress community. And the reality of the situation is there, I just pointed them in the right direction. You know, I just pointed them at the WordPress community, which is this amazing community of engineers and designers and marketers and writers and people who just care so deeply about this, this community. And um, when you have something that's founded and forged on top of a community like that, I think we all tend to take it. Um, I want to say, I don't want to say personally, we all, we all have a deep investment in the WordPress ecosystem and the experience that people feel when they interact with WordPress. And when you recommend to a client, to a customer, to a friend that you should try WordPress, that can mean one of a dozen or more experiences. WordPress is software that we're all familiar with, but the way in which it's implemented and used is different across different hosting companies and throughout the ecosystem. And so if you, aren't in a position where you can feel safe about recommending WordPress uh, without a caveat, like, but you have to use it with this host, or you have to use it with this technology, or you have to use it with this plugin. Um, I think that's a disservice to the WordPress community as a whole. I think, uh, you know, anywhere you go and find WordPress is, um, it should be a really positive experience for you. And so I got to thinking about that and the way in which I was working with hosting companies. And what I realized was, um, you know, if, if you hear around the water cooler, we, we talk about this all the time at WordCamps. We run into people who say, how did you get started with WordPress? Well, my friend recommended it, or someone said it was an easy thing to use or, or whatever it might be. And then they go and they try WordPress by typing in WordPress hosting into the Google, or they try a random hosting company, whatever it might be. And let's say that experience is not so good. Well, that's their first impressions of WordPress there's a chance they might try again, right? They might move from one host to another, but that individual probably has um, little understanding that the WordPress experience can be different in different locations. So that first impression becomes oftentimes their only impression. And so this got me to a place where I started to understand that as companies that host WordPress, build on WordPress, we have a responsibility to these customers to make sure that they are um, having a, a good experience and that they're successful. And the funny thing is, is actually, uh, Corey, you and I are in so in so much alignment on this stuff. I actually just uh, finished a proposal for a speaking uh, abstract for uh, WordCamp Canada. Uh, it's looking like a, a it's going to be a fun WordCamp. If anybody wants to, you know, speak at that one, I think they're closing their uh, their their op um, you know speaker submission soon. Um, but I, I propose this idea that, uh, you know, hosting companies were at one time forged in the fire of innovation. You talked about the, the five minute install, then it became one click installs. Then it just became that you signed up with a hosting company and your WordPress was sitting there ready and waiting for you when you got in. Those were the advancements that we saw um, that were so powerful in the WordPress ecosystem. And um, it was so amazing to see how fast things could get going. But you know what's interesting there is, is that when WordPress required a little bit of technical knowledge, the ability to FTP into a server and then download the zip file and drop it over and unpack it, and even just being able to unpack it into a server was like, that was huge, you know, not having to do this deep install. Um, but that opened or lowered the barrier of entry to WordPress so low that now you can get started with it with little to no technical experience. I mean, your basic requirements of knowledge to use WordPress today is the ability to traverse the internet, to use an internet browser, to click buttons and understand a user interface. Um, so reducing that barrier to entry also meant that we were welcoming a very large group of people who, and I think it's important for the WordPress community to recognize this, 
who not who don't necessarily know anything about WordPress as a as a community, don't know anything as about WordPress as a software. To them, WordPress is no different than going online and you know trying out some software to help you build something. Or um, it's no more important to them than than uh, an interface for uploading videos to YouTube or something like that. It it is an essentially software. And I think at the same time. The people that we're all trying to attract to use our plugins to to get on hosting things like that these are diyers these are small business owners they're they're people who are trying to get started um uh, in wordpress because they thought it was going to be easy but they have a whole life that they have to run separate from this and i think we tend to in our minds think well these individuals probably want to become familiar with wordpress they want to get excited about it they want to come to wordcamps they want to learn how to do all these things Really, the situation is that a lot of them don't. They just want to be able to use the software, launch a website, and then move on to the next task they have for their business. And these are the same people who are probably doing everything from stocking the shelves to, you know, getting ready for accounting for for submitting their taxes. They're they're the same ones who are doing the hiring and the firing, maybe running the register. Becoming a web designer and a WordPress implementer is probably like the lowest thing on their list, but they just know it's a requirement for them to operate their business. So anyways, that's a very long way of saying that um, we have a group of individuals out there who are interested in using WordPress and leveraging it because they've heard great things about it and it's the right software to use, but maybe are not as interested in becoming, um, you know, deep committed community members with uh, you know a long uh, or deep knowledge of the of the software, and so we owe it to them to create a solution that allows them to be successful, leverage WordPress, which is for the betterment of the ecosystem for everybody in the industry, but then to go back on and move on with their lives. And if we're not providing a good solution for them, they're going to turn to Squarespace or Wix or Shopify, and. While I do appreciate technological innovation and competitive nature of that uh, in, in the industry, we care deeply about WordPress for a reason. It's open source. It's an opportunity for people to take advantage of, you know, our mission, which is to democratize publishing, all of those things. Um, so, yeah, I think that, you know, we have, as anyone who's making money or building on top of or working with WordPress, a responsibility to that type of customer. That was incredibly articulate that I've come to know from you. <laughs> Ask a question. I'm going to get a great, great answer. <laughs> um, so, you know, we think about that ecosystem and there's so many layers. You were talking about the potential end user, the business owner, the person out there. Maybe it's a coach, therapist or somebody that's like, I am using this tool that happens to be WordPress to do something for my life and business. And that's one component. Then you get down to another component, which is the people that build for it. And, you know, for, I, I wrote down the word frustration. You know, when we talk about software, we always want to be frictionless. We want to decrease frustration, increase joy and happiness. And you think about those two la layers right there. So critical. I've talked to probably like you, you know, in my, in my ordinary life, walking life, <laughs> when somebody goes, they realize what I do. They're like, well, I've got a website. Is it on WordPress? And they're like, I have no clue. You, then you look and you do the WP admin thing and you're like, okay, it's WordPress. You look under the, the hood a little bit and you're like, it's WordPress. Um, and, and like you said, aspirationally, they're just trying to do something for their business along the way this tool is doing it. And like you said, they may not come to a WordCamp. They may not contribute to the community, but that's what we're doing it for with the bigger mission. The other thing you said, but, and then that agency or the builder, you know, like we, we don't want them to leave to other tools. That's, that's one level. We don't, we want them to use WordPress, embrace WordPress, love WordPress and put it into their workflows to build more sites, keep extending the internet through WordPress. Um, but I, I look also, then you mentioned, I was writing down competition and you mentioned them, you know, when yeah. I started and you started, Wix Weebly Squarespace didn't really exist, or I guess it might have, but we didn't know about it. And it, WordPress was this dominant tool. Now the competition has gotten really solid. Um, there was a guy that worked with me a long time ago. He was actually an intern. He went on to do 
man, fabulous things in his career. He worked at Twitter doing mobile video ads, uh, rolled out of Twitter, started his own studio. I went to his website when he told me about it. I was like, oh, this is this is nice. I could tell Ted built it. Um, and but it looked nice, like it was a nice representative of him. And I thought this this could totally be WordPress. He's got background with WordPress. When I looked under the hood, I go, ah, Squarespace. Yeah. And so, you know, I, I just to exa- just to share an example is like one day long ago, we didn't have a lot of competition. We were the great tool and we rode that momentum for so long. Now we've got competition. So we need we need to take this more seriously. And and underneath that all is the hosting component. When you go to one of the services we talked about, which we believe Squarespace, they're handling all that stuff on the background. The competition is harder. There's other options for people to use from the builders to the users. Um, but I think part of this conversation, Jesse, is, is when we look at the mission, democratize publishing. I think about that group as, and there's no offense here when I say this, but I think of them as the lowercase p WordPress people. They don't know, they haven't drank the Kool-Aid, don't understand the brand, don't protect the brand and the community and think, oh, it's always capital P, right? And I think about all those people that aren't in our bubble, going to the word camps, being involved at post status or in make or whatever that is. And I think that's what our responsibility is, is like maintaining that great uh, position to help them do those things as those lowercase p people. Like, you know, it's just a tool in their box that happens to help them do something. And that's where we drill down to hosting. And what you really helped me see that might have been land there, but like really focus on this experience. We don't have that SaaS like you know, thing of a piece of software like a Squarespace where we control all the environment. It's because you can do anything you want with it. It leaves a lot of messy opportunities out there. But the importance that it underscores for me is nailing when you said the word experience, nailing that experience. And it starts with the agency or the people helping them, but then their partners, which are the web hosting companies. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you think about a business owner, they use software like, let's say, Quicken, for example, right? They use that to moderate their books and to to keep track of all their sales and everything else. I don't know anybody who uses Quicken. And correct, I could be completely wrong and I could be you know, insulting in a huge community of Quicken users that I don't know about. And I, I'm sorry for that. But I do know a few business owners and I, I, I do know them intimately enough to know that they barely even know the name of that software sometimes. They just know that it's on their desktop and it's what they have to punch the numbers into. I think it's interesting for, if I were to tell them that there was a large Quicken community out there that was having you know meetings all over the world and things like that, I'm not sure that they would necessarily be interested in joining that community. Um, it's a software that they use all the time. It runs their business. It's something that is uh, you know probably a powerful time saver for them worth investing in and paying for but um again you know they need to go and move on with their career and their their job and and get that business off the ground and spending time in a community like that may not be something that's super important to them um and so uh you know i think we're in a unique in- situation where we have an open source software that is made available to anyone who wants to use it across many different platforms And because of the fact that we are building and directly engaged in the development of that software, we care deeply about it. And there's thousands of us all over the world, which is why we have local word camps, why we have big national word camps, continental word camps. Um, But, you know, we are making up a very small percentage of the total WordPress ecosystem. And so we end up being a louder group of individuals um, focused on the betterment of WordPress, uh, but we're not made up by the majority of the users of WordPress, which I think creates an interesting paradigm. Um, But, you know, the leveraging of that open source software to be put onto different platforms brings out a diversity in hosting that I think is incredibly powerful. WordPress would be a very different tool and community if there was just one single company that offered it the same way that a, a Squarespace is offered or or Shopify. Um, 
And those companies actually struggle to do things like move into different markets or engage with different groups of individuals across the world. Um, WordPress actually prevails in that way. I mean, I have conversations with people in Japan and in different parts of Asia or South America, and WordPress is just there and present and translated and easy to use. Um, and I think that's that's a really beautiful thing. So what I, you know, what we're kind of getting to here is, is a place where the open source software itself is, is run by a group of individuals. Um, and then it's leveraged by third party uh, commercial entities to deliver it and make it available to customers. And so you look at these hosting companies all over the planet and, and there's really no requirement as a hosting company. There's nothing that you need to do to, there's no certification license. There's no um, you know, barrier of entry that prevents you from putting a WordPress install on a box that you own. Um, and I think that's where the conversations that you and I have been having are really intriguing and, and interesting because we have been diving into what are, you know, the core tenants of great hosting. What are the things that a great hosting company needs to do to uh, represent WordPress in a way that's responsible to the ecosystem to provide a great experience to customers, uh, something that's reliable, safe, secure, fast, um, all of those things. And, uh, you know, I think as we start to explore and look at different hosting companies, we see this okay. wealth of technology and innovation, user interface changes and things like that, that, um, that really help WordPress to continue to grow and blossom and everything else. Um, but we also see a lot of troubling things too, things that, you know, shouldn't be in place, things that are um, not being catered to or cared for or relationships aren't being cultivated the way that they should be. And so that's why I'm really starting to think about like, and, and coming to you with like these ideas around like, how can we, as people who are working in this industry, who have connections with people who are uh, in the communities who are working at different hosting companies, how can we leverage those relationships, talk to people and understand what it is that the ecosystem needs so that we can develop, um, you know, a playbook or, or something along those lines that would help a hosting company to understand what it is that they owe back to the community to do it right. Yes, I love it. And that's what we've been talking all along is like the need for, because we are grassroots, open source, spirit of collaboration, sometimes it's messier than it is in a controlled environment. And but there, there's this need when we talk about you said experience earlier, we need to protect the experience. We need to protect that protects the mission, like democratizing publishing. Um, but the one thing I wanted to say before we get into those things was real yeah. quick is I've tried to ring this bell for a long time. As long as I've made my living in WordPress is we need to protect the ecosystem yeah. because yeah. You know, we've all ridden this incredible wave called WordPress. Like every year, it just feels like it's up and to the right. Keep climb, climb, climb. This thing is just going to the stratosphere. Last couple of years, I've been like, whew, it doesn't feel like we're doing that as much. We've had pandemics. We've had eco economic conditions. All those things affect competition, right? And And this is us getting serious about that part of the ecosystem, why it matters, why I want to say this for our post sense members. I have, you have earned our living for decades in this industry because of all that momentum that was started mm -hmm. long ago. But we have, I, I, I look at it selfishly for a second. For me, I go, I want WordPress to be around because I like working in this industry. I want WordPress to be around for our kids, things like that, the ability to kind of create your thing on the internet and be that hub for everything you're doing to share your ideas, your products, uh, your thoughts, however crazy or whatever they might be. Yeah. That goes back to mission, but we have to protect and prosper the ecosystem for all of us. It's, it's all of us in this. I've tried to ring this bill so many times, Jesse, product companies, software companies, hosting companies, anyone that makes their living in WordPress, I feel like should have, this core concern protect yeah. grow the ecosystem and now we get into this critical part of it which is hosting and you talked about that like because we're open source 
we may not have these like requirements that might be in other other industries. And these parts of that, what does that mean? Right. And, you know, for those of you listening, I want you to be thinking about this. I want you to have your own opinions about it. I want you to be a little opinionated and to share that with Jesse and I, because we're going to be ringing this bell a lot. And as Jesse just said, you just said, Jesse, that the, like when we've talked the last couple of months, it's like, what are the minimums that a good WordPress hosting citizen would embrace, should embrace about the WordPress project and the community as a whole? We've seen some great hosting, com hosting companies come in and go, we care. And they show up first. They know this is not just I take and I don't give back. And uh, that's always a balance in business, of course. However, to be a good WordPress citizen, there's some key things a part of that to preserve that experience, preserve the ecosystem, and to protect the, the the mission of what we're doing in our world. Yeah. And and what we talked about is that there needs to be that set. You talked about that playbook, just something you can say if you're a good citizen in hosting. These are these bars. We've talked about a, a bunch of stuff. We have our own opinions. I want to hear yours. Uh, we we also want this to be an open conversation too, to get feedback from the community. If you believe in what we're saying, that the ecosystem benefits you and our world for mission and purpose and all that, then contribute to the conversation. Yeah. So that at the end of these conversations you and I are having, we come out with those kind of tenets that we go very minimum, but essential things. How mm. do you think about those overall too? Like we're taking on a big subject, but it's a critical subject that we both believe in. Yeah. I mean, I think that as we start to explore this, the core tenants will start to expose themselves as, um, and you said minimum requirements. I think that stuff is going to be a little bit easier, right? We, we know what level of version of PHP or SQL you should be running. Uh, you know, we we know uh, that you should be supporting certain aspects of technology, um, accessibility, things like that. Uh, I think what's going to be interesting is, is as we start to uh, really kind of go into uh, the user experience. Now, you talked about protecting the experience. It's funny because uh, and I use chat, chat GBT and I've had a lot of conversations with it and I've I've imported a lot of information about myself to help me to better answer the question of what it is that I'm doing in this industry. Um, I, I play a few different roles in my life. I've, uh, I've, I've been an author, a professor at a university. I've given talks and consulted at companies. I work at Automatic. Um, I, I do a variety of things and, and I couldn't find that connecting tissue, right? And ChatGBT is actually funny because it's one of those things where the more you talk to it, the more you start to kind of like pull out your own thought process and, and really kind of dive into like what it is that you've probably been thinking, but it's like helping to clarify. I think it's because ChatGPT tends to have this like bias towards like being like every idea that you tell it is is great. You know, like it, it never really argues with you. Anyways, that's a whole uh, separate uh, diversion there. But anyways, what I came out with was I'm an experience advocate. I'm someone who advocates for the experience. And that could be in a variety of different ways because, and the funny thing was, is I never really felt comfortable blogging on my site as much as I should, because of the fact that I felt like I didn't have this centralized theme. I wanted to talk about how I find it so frustrating. I pull up at a Lowe's and their um, curbside delivery is taking up like, you know, the spots that are closest to the store, but those people aren't getting out of their car. Right. So like those individuals are like being serviced by an employee who can walk the few extra steps. Right. Like, and I also want to talk about hosting experiences and, and user interface design and all these other things. And so that's what really kind of drew me into that idea is that I'm going to advocate for the experience. That's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to be dedicating outside of my career at Automatic. That's what I'm going to be focusing on uh, for in my personal writings, in podcast appearances and, and things like that. I'm going to be focusing on providing and advocating for the best possible experience on anything that we're using. And I think that's where, you know, our work together can help, uh, like I can, build on that to provide um, a playbook to the community um, around user experience and uh, what we should expect to see when we're working with hosting companies or software and things like that. 
Um, but it is a it is a big list. And I think what we're going to do is have to break it down into um, specific things and goals. Uh, we know that performance is incredibly important for both the ability for a site to load and for someone to consume the content, but also for marketing and SEO. Uh, we know that security is incredibly important, something I'm very passionate about, because it's not just your site that is, uh, um, you know, a vulnerability to your site can mean um, that it's leveraged to to hurt or control or do bad things or malicious things to thousands of other people, citizens, websites out there. Um, there's there's so much that goes into it, but I think what we can do is start to just kind of carve out security, performance, reliability, um, the user interface experience, the ability to actually be successful with WordPress and start to just really dive into one of the, those things, each one at, one at a time. And I think what would be really great is if we could leverage the community behind um, post status behind WordPress community, you know, uh, going to events like CloudFest and WordCamps and other things in the future and gather, take that time to gather feedback from, from users, from uh, developers, from designers, from people who are building and working and living off of WordPress and take all of that information and then give it back to the community and let them tell us, did we get it right? You know, are we hitting the nail on the head? If not, what's your feedback? Help us refine it. We'll iterate on it. We're not going to get it right the first time, but we can continue to operate in a way that we're living or building a living document that everyone can start to um, give feedback on. And I think through that exercise, we will make profound improvements on the WordPress experience. You know, specifically to post status, this is the, the overall experience is critical. It, and so I'm going to say it very boldly. If you do WordPress, use WordPress prolifically as your tool around your profession or your business, you should care about these topics. That's why we're doing this. Yep. And that's what you're inviting. We are inviting people into this conversation. And then as a community too, and I think post status can help lead this because it is our tool. We should care about it. We should be passionate about it. We should be kind of opinionated too about it which there's no no lack of opinions in WordPress, but find the resonating things that we can go look to anybody that the lowercase p's, for instance, or anybody and go like, here's some things you could ask your WordPress host. What do they do in these things? Mm -hmm. And some rallying crystallizing principles that they can go and go, this is the mark for what it should be to preserve the experience and pres preserve the ecosystem that I make my living from. So I think post as members in particular should very much care about this. We should step in and into the conversation and as a chorus of people raise all of this up because it really matters. There's mission and purpose, there's vision in the world, but down to that, below that is this critical piece that we make our living from. Yeah. So care is big. There's a reason there's the capital P dang it um, function in WordPress, right? I don't know if everybody knows this, but if you try to type in WordPress with a lowercase p, there's a function that filters through the content and then upper, you know, raises the case. Um, and I just think it's funny that that that, that the existence of that function is um, is just speaking directly to what you're saying, which is that there are a large group of people out there who either don't know or don't care that WordPress is spelled with a capital P. And while they might love the software and what it does for them and helps their business to be successful, that doesn't mean that they're necessarily going to um, take the time to give feedback on the software, to go into the community and tell the people who are creating it what they're struggling with or what they're dealing with. And this is why we have as, uh, you know, Maybe that's probably the first tenant, right? Is is are you listening? Do you hear what your customers are saying? You know, and I think as we start to evolve, uh, what we you know put out there in in terms of this playbook or these core tenants, um, it should help. I would hope that hosting companies, executives at hosting companies, and 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 designers and developers and everybody who works there are, are reading these things so they can. Um, one, give feedback on it until we until we refine it to a place where we think it's good, but also then use it as an opportunity to make their own products better. But the other thing that it can do 
um, is to inform uh, the greater WordPress community. Uh, and I don't think uh, it makes sense for us to speak about, um, I, I don't think it necessarily makes sense for this book to be evolved into a place where it necessarily has like a list of the top 10 hosts. I think what it should be is us saying that um, these bits of technology, the way in which this experience works, uh, the ability for data liber liberation and migration, things like that, are the, the tenets and the values that hosts should have. And as long as you're informed on those things and you know how to look for them and to make sure that they are present in the hosting company that you're choosing, then you can influence the community based on where you're spending your money. And I think that's an important thing. I know that and maybe this is something else that we can try to uh, to help uh, with in the community. But making money isn't a taboo subject. Making money off of WordPress isn't a bad thing. Um, commercializing WordPress is the way in which it continues to grow. Um, <clears throat> if we try to make WordPress only available to people who are going to use it for free, we'll have a very different user base and uh, and the dollars will flow into different locations and different places. And there will be a lot less opportunity to involve uh, or rather innovate and, and grow WordPress. So I think, you know, we should feel comfortable with it. But I think we should also understand that the dollars that we have in our pockets are our power towards improving the WordPress community uh, beyond just making direct uh um, contributions, you know, of course, the people who are writing the code and, and contributing to WordPress core and the community and translations and marketing and all the other stuff, incredibly valuable, awesome people. Uh, but again, if you're directing, if the larger WordPress community is directing their dollars towards responsible citizens of the internet, doing the best that they can for the WordPress ecosystem, then you're uh, speaking towards those goals and that value uh, with your wallet. And I think it's a powerful thing. I love that you said, this is not a top 10 list of the best hosts. This yeah. isn't in any of our intent. It's right. These are our expect, expectations of WordPress hosts. And you know, to do the cliche quote is a uh, rising tide lifts all boats. That yeah. is the intention here is there's ebbs and flows in all business, you know? Right. Companies go through cycles, but what's a through line to measure the expectations measure. And, and like you said, to influence, like we're, yeah. we're all in this together. If, if we turn a WordPress user, WordPress potentially declines, we're all affected by it. And so we're all in this together. And these are some watermarks to say, this is what, how you can evaluate. And I, I gather this probably going to, you know, be it, a living document, those principles at some point, like as web has changed, you know, I remember when I started in 2008 uh, with iThemes, the iPhone was version one. Well, that fundamentally changed the internet or life on the planet. You know, yeah. there's going to be more technology, just like you said, like Ch T is a great instance. That's going to change how this is. And so we're going to have to change and make sure we're reviewing these regularly and then ringing the bell outward. And we need everyone to do that because we we've said i've said this a couple times but i'm going to beat the dead horse we've got to keep ringing these bells over and over to preserve the experience preserve the mission and preserve uh the ecosystem that we live on so okay that's kind of the what um the, or i'm sorry the why why it's yeah. important why we're doing it uh we all we both have a vested interest we talked a lot about our potential bias here mm -hmm. but I would say venture now, Jesse, like everyone should have a bias toward this. Mm -hmm. Everyone should expect these things to be standard required table stakes for WordPress hosts because they're going to benefit customer. Everybody's going to benefit. So we have talked about what that means. We want to s help um, moderate and lead and guide the conversation toward these expectations and so you and I will be co-hosting a new podcast as part of Post Status, separate from this draft one. We wanted to share what we're doing here really deeply, the whys, what we're trying to do. We want to recruit you into this intent with a very clear goal. And so we came up with a new uh, title for this podcast that will be separated out from Post Status to keep ringing this bells. 
and we're calling it Impressive Hosting. Hosted, co-hosted by Jesse and I, we will be leveraging our relationships, our contacts within the industry to bring experts, to bring people on, to talk about these things along the way. You and I are going to guide this conversation, but with feedback and input from our entire community, what is the resonating shared common values we have regarding this um, vital subject? So I love it. You came up with the name. I was like, that is a great aspiration. If we can get impressive WordPress hosting across the board, yeah. we've lifted all ships. That's right. Yeah. And I think it speaks to the idea that there's value in the diversity of hosting. Um, I think that, uh, again, we talked about this a little bit earlier, but the the benefit that we have um, in competitive nature, in the competitive nature of the internet is that when Shopify does something innovative or Squarespace does something really cool, that's an opportunity for us to learn, uh, to leverage what they've done based on the impacts that they're making with their customers and listening to what they have to say to each other and things like that. We also have the ability to leverage competition within our own ecosystem, which is truly unique. And I think it's something that, um, you know, Matt had envisioned when he, uh, you know, had thought about WordPress being open source and available to, to anyone to, to use this product is that um, if, you know, if, if, if WordPress was, owned and operated by a single company and it was the only way in which you could get it was through a single host, then we're just positioning WordPress against these other CMS platforms. But by leveraging WordPress to deliver it through a, a, several different avenues, we're then also uh, creating some happy competition or cooperation between those companies. And if we have a podcast like what we're doing or other people in the industry working on this, other voices who are um, managing this conversation, we then have the opportunity to leverage what we learn from the competitive nature between those companies to lift WordPress, as you said, and raise all boats. Um, and I think that's where, uh, you know, we're going to live in, in this podcast is to highlight the benefits of, of WordPress in that diverse group of, of companies. And, uh, and I'm glad you announced it because, you know, I've been sitting on the edge of my seat, ready to, to jump up and down because uh, I am so excited about this opportunity to um, to work with you more closely and to actually uh, co-host a podcast because I've been on dozens of them, but I just haven't uh, pulled the trigger and started my own. So uh, this is uh, this is just something I'm just super passionate about and excited about and happy to be working with you, Corey, and your uh, community and, and the people who are uh, committed to making WordPress better. Um, but I think what we can do is uh, spend our time uh, highlighting the companies that are doing it right and what we don't want to do. And this is something that we had talked about uh, several times is that it doesn't make sense, I think, for us to dwell on or highlight uh, the things that hosting companies are doing wrong uh, and, and to focus on the areas where there could be improvement. I think that lowers the conversational bar um, and focuses us in the wrong direction. Um, it's easy to point out flaws or problems, but when you get into the nuance of running a business and having complexities of prioritization and choosing between, you know, what you need to build next, every hosting company is going to have problems. Uh, and, and as you talked about in the beginning, right, there's an ebb and a flow, there's, you know, you get better and then you kind of hit status quo and then you innovate and you get better again. Um, I think that pointing the finger at companies that are and saying, Hey, they're not doing it right, or they're not a good actor or whatever frankly, is a waste of our time. Uh, what I'm excited for is for us to interview and talk to people who are getting it right. Um, and that might be one small component of a larger ecosystem, right? Or, or a larger company. Um, you know, you might take one hosting company and talk about their onboarding flow, how they're they're nailing it. You might talk about um, how another hosting company is handling and translating to, you know, a, a country or a region that has, you know, 50 languages in a small geographical area, Right. There are opportunities for us to pin uh, to to cherry pick the pieces that um, hosting companies are getting right, highlight that, elevate it, and showcase it um, to prompt everyone else in the industry to look at it and evaluate it and say, how can we get to that level? How can we do better? And it creates a positive looping um, 
that you know uh, upward spiral of us just continually raising the bar over and over again. And if this is a series that goes on for a year or 10 years, I think there's going to be enough content and opportunity for us to to run with this for a very long time. And I'm just so excited about um, the impact that, you know, I think we're laying the groundwork here for everyone who's listening and interacting. And we want to create a place where it's very like um, collaborative uh, and transparent. Uh, for us to to work with the community, I think it's an opportunity for all of us to be able to to kind of weigh in here and and make some big impacts. Yeah, I just keep thinking when you say a year or ten years that someone and we've raised our hands to say we'll we'll start, we'll go first. Should be ringing this bell continually. Should be mm -hmm. reviewed. It should be adjusted. It should be updated, and and we should recruit people into that bigger vision than just you or I, because yeah. it really matters. When you mention a word in there, it's geographic. You know, I thought about where you and I are, are sitting in the United States. Sure. WordPress has had huge fire bonfire in the United States. Um, but there's countries across the world. It's an international, it's global platform, not just for the U S when you said geographic, maybe think like I was talking to a great long time uh, community member, community leader in the space and mentioned like in Spain, for instance, like there's, I, I can't remember what he told me. It was like 15 or 16 word camps planned. That was an indication to me. Like it broadened my perspective versus just my like current one sitting here speaking English, talking to a fellow American and yeah. that passionate about this. But like, this is also for those, the rest of the world. Uh, there are nuances in Spain. We don't want them to have a bad experience when they're right. really evangelizing WordPress in Spain yeah. right now. We want to capitalize on that. We want to help support them and be that best experience in Thailand. Whoever is using this across the world to preserve that uh, experience. So yeah. I'm really excited about. Up. I'm really excited about what's happening around the world. I mean, I have conversations with companies and in Africa and South America and Asia and um, the growth and the excitement around WordPress is huge. It's huge. And, you know, obviously WordPress has, has gotten into the global uh, community for, for a really long time. But when you talk to people in Nigeria or Brazil or Japan um, in different parts of the world who are, um, you know, really starting to capitalize on the power of WordPress for their customers, you kind of get these nostalgic feelings of uh, how it was, you know, uh, 15, 10 years ago, whatever, uh, when when WordPress was this. Um, I don't want to say that uh, <clears throat> the excitement has gone out, but uh, I would definitely say that WordPress um, has uh, had a very special feeling for me early on, uh, you know, because you, you're starting to understand the power of it. Right. And you've seen the evolution of it and where it went from. Uh, when I started using it in 2005 to, to, to 2010, it was remarkable. It was huge. And, and, and by 10, let's see, 20, 2010, I started a company where I replaced a huge um, network of sites with WordPress and using multi-site and the, and, the, and, the, and the evolutions that we were able to make with templating and design and things like that. Such an exciting time. Um, and now, you know, we look at things like Gutenberg and full site editing and all the work that's going on there. And I'm personally unbelievably excited about it. I love to see the things that we're doing with it. Um, but I think that when you tap into these uh, different regions in the world where uh, people are starting to use WordPress um, in different ways, you start to tap into uh, or are addressing different needs in different markets and stuff like that. You start to tap into this... Uh, um, excitement that exists uh, beyond just the, you know, the, the goggles that we have on in our current areas or regions or people or small little ecosystems that we have talking to just the individuals that we know uh, within the community. When you start to really expand that, you start to see um, that excitement again, that, that uh, I don't know, that magic behind WordPress that I'm super excited about. See, you just telling kind of your origin story with it. There's magic moments in that, you know, yeah. and it was, it was, it was highlighting my own resonating with my own magic moments that yeah. first time you're like, we need to do a website. Okay. What are the tools? And I remember someone sharing Joomla with me and not to throw any shit at Joomla. I'm so glad Joomla still exists. 
Yeah. Uh, it's open source. But I was like, oh gosh. And then I found WordPress and the magic of push and click publish and putting my stuff out or our organization's website and putting it out there for people to do. And we want to keep that magic. But the magic, this is the thing we're going to be doing. We're going to be pulling in diverse perspectives. And that's also global. And it's uh, all yeah. those avatars, those people that they may work on one part of uh, the the experience, but they're so passionate about it. We want to talk to you. We mm -hmm. want to hear from you. We want to hear from those across the world and their perspectives. Because just because we might not think, you know, I resonate with this too. The wildfire is there. It's not like it was when we we're in 2014, in New York City. Right. You know, it was like yeah. hot. Like it was yeah. cool to be in it. And feeling that is awesome. That's happening across the world still. Right. And so keeping the magic alive, keeping that fire alive, absolutely critical. That's exactly right. Yeah. So podcast will be called Impressive Hosting. We'll have a subscribe button so you can get onto this. Um, I would I would urge you, those of you listening. Uh, and watching to come subscribe and be a part of the conversation ring the bells too ring your own bells bring them here let's let's crystallize where find those out so we can share those out we'll keep them as simple as and minimal as possible to preserve the experience it's called impressive hosting co-hosted by jesse friedman and Corey miller at pod at post status i almost said podcast post status <laughs> well, okay post status so is basically synonymous with podcast at this point right <laughs> there you go <laughs> Yeah. Well, I want to turn the page real quick and just mention a couple of things on this subject. So I know yeah. you're leaving soon to yeah, go to tomorrow. Germany. Oh, wow. Tomorrow for this uh, really cool, huge. It's like the old South by Southwest interactive back in the day, like Cloudfest. I've been there to the one in Germany you're going to. I've been the one last year that you and I got to talk in Austin. Yeah. But you're going to the the main event cloud. CloudFest. What's your perspectives on CloudFest? And then we've also seen, and I love it, that WordPress is a huge subject within CloudFest, and that's a good thing. But tell me yeah. your perspectives about CloudFest, what you're excited about and working on and doing out of Cloud, CloudFest. So I think I went to CloudFest for the first time. At the time, it wasn't called CloudFest. It was called, uh, I think, World Hosting Days. Um, I think that was the name of it. It was a yeah over six years ago, I think I went. And you have no idea what you're getting into uh, before you get there. You can talk to people and uh, they'll try to explain to you what CloudFest is like, um, but you can't really understand it until you get there. It's interesting because, and I'm going to mispronounce this, so my German friends, please uh, uh, give me a free pass here. But uh, it's either Rust or Rust, uh, Germany. It's in southwestern Germany. Um, it is uh, a town that basically houses Europa Park, a uh, theme park um, that is very similar to and looking like, uh, it looks a lot like Epcot in my opinion. It has the big dome in the middle, it has roller coasters all around it with different countries represented. Um, and so uh, Soren, who is the chairman of uh, CloudFest, uh, he has uh, uh, had CloudFest at that location uh for for many years basically they carve out like a week just before the park opens again for the season so it's a great opportunity to take advantage of this entire theme park uh you get to ride the roller coasters and um eat at uh you know special uh themed restaurants and things like that but there's also a huge expo and um every hosting company every major hosting company tends to be present along with tons of uh you know companies that are providing services to hosting companies and such um, but it's really, really cool because um, we're starting to see a shift where uh, Soren and the team are really focusing and doubling down on WordPress as, as a, a, a very important element of the hosting world. And I think what happens is that, you know, people like you, you and myself, like we know the value of WordPress. We know the importance of it. But again, if you talk to the people who don't necessarily live inside the WordPress ecosystem, who aren't as familiar with it. Um, and then for it to be pulled out and brought to this like universal hosting company and said that this is one of the most important pieces of technology and, and communities in the entire hosting industry 
um, and we're going to highlight it and we're going to create a WP day and we're going to bring in uh, people who know about WordPress and the innovations that are happening there and have uh, a place where they can talk and, and hang out mixed with a hackathon where we're you know working on improving the technology. I think it's great. And I think there's been a lot of strides in the right direction uh, in terms of CloudFest investing in and, and, and helping with uh, promoting um, WordPress. Uh, I think it's also interesting because, you know, we talk about the competitive nature of hosting companies and the technologies behind WordPress and the fact that while we're all leveraging and using the same open source software built by the same community, there is a very strong competitive component to, to that. But when you get to CloudFest, um, you will be eating dinners with and hanging out with people who represent many different hosting companies. Um, and it's like a, it's like a kind of a beautiful thing when you see all these individuals who are, uh, you know, uh, typically, um, you know, trying to figure out how they can get a, a leg up on you or, or trying to, you know, improve their own offering against yours. Uh, suddenly, you know, sharing a drink or, or hanging out or whatever, um, and uh, and and thinking about what they can be doing towards uh, the greater good of WordPress. Um, and, uh, I think that that's a phenomenal thing. I think WordCamps, um, you know, have a different position inside of the WordPress community, you know, really promoting and, and, and thinking about it from a user perspective. Um, and, you know, you get agencies and professionals and designers and developers and bloggers and all those at WordCamps, uh, very focused on the actual, uh, core software itself, but at CloudFest, it's much more, uh, a, a collaborative and bringing together of the commercial entities of, of WordPress, the people who are driving the dollars behind um, the industry. And so it's a, it's a really fun event um, <clears throat> because it's in the middle of nowhere. You either fly into like Zurich or Frankfurt and you end up driving or taking a train um, and you end up being in the middle of nowhere pretty much for a couple of days, <coughs> but it is um, a whirlwind. I, uh, the last few years, uh, we'll be there for on site for 30, uh, three days, and I'll have 30, 40 meetings uh, with different people, uh, interviewing, talking to them, understanding what it is that they need. Um, and uh, and then the parties go all night. I actually stay off site so they can get some sleep because uh, the people of CloudFest really know how to party um, and uh, and have a good time. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, CloudFest has definitely become like center universe stage for conversations within the industry uh what i was impressed by when i went to you know obviously being in a theme park and getting like exclusive access there's nobody else there but cloudfest people yeah. it's pretty incredible what stuck out to me was how much the focus is on those networking on that yeah. those conversations like a set aside place that you can reserve tables to have those conversations you and i will be doing uh, episode zero or episode episode one. Episode zero, episode yeah, episode I like that. Yeah, from CloudFest. That's right. Uh, which is going to be really cool. So Jesse will be there ringing the bell too. Uh, so if you're going to CloudFest uh, in Germany next week, um, be sure and hit up Jesse. Uh, unfortunately, I was trying to get there, I couldn't get there. Got we have uh, kids spring break here, so wasn't able to get over, but. It's it's a really cool event, and I'm, and the emphasis point here too beyond this is like really cool. It's it's just a different kind of conference than I'm used to, and I like it. Yeah. Um, is that that like you said with Soren and team are really pushing and understanding WordPress is at the forefront of what all of these companies are doing there. You know, when they look at their base and see how much WordPress is installed, my guess is it's sixty or seventy percent or higher. If they're not an exclusive, like a managed WordPress host, they only do WordPress hosting. Um, it may be even higher, and they recognize the need. And then having WordPress as the center of that conversation mm -hmm. is really good for this entire conversation we're having here, too. Yeah. It's funny that you say 60 to 70 percent, because I, I check in on a few things with hosting companies every time I, I have an opportunity to sit down with them. And I'll say anecdotally. Uh, you know, based on numbers that they have, but like, I'm not actually seeing the data reports myself. I'm just kind of asking where they are. There's that 60 to 70% pops up as two things that, that seem to um, uh, be a recurring number all the time, which is that uh, regardless if they're WordPress focused or not, 
it seems like a hosting company uh, that offers a one-click WordPress install will be doing about 60 to 70% WordPress installations. Um, and then the other thing that pops up uh, a lot too uh, in my conversations is that uh, 60 to 70% are identified as uh, small business owners, DIYers, uh, who are trying to do this on their own. And I think it's funny that you touched on that because um, it's something I want to circle back to, which is that when we were talking about impressive hosting and the, and the people that we want to bring in to help us, you know, we want people to listen and, and be a part of this conversation. But what I would really love is if there's ways for us to reach out to um, not just the people who are working in the industry and uh, making money or, or, or building things for WordPress, uh, but also the people who are just trying to run their businesses um, and, and highlight their voice as well right? Like the, the, the people that we talked about earlier who are not necessarily, uh, you know, uh, deeply committed to and involved in the WordPress community, but they represent a very big, big uh, population of WordPress users that hosting companies, uh, you know, are hosting their sites, you know, for, for these people. Um, and so if we can't start by listening to them, I think we're going to immediately start this whole thing off on the, on the wrong track. So um, if anybody out there, uh, is listening and they know people who uh, are WordPress users who are running a, a business um, and and they are somewhat detached from the WordPress community and just kind of use WordPress as a tool. Uh, I would say, let's get those people uh, involved in this discussion. And, and if you have connections to those people, please reach out to Corey or myself and, and connect those dots for us because I think raising or elevating their voice is gonna be a very important part of this whole project. 100%. Yeah. And as you listen, you know, for those listening in, watching, as you talk to and interface, if you're at a hosting company, check out the support. Like, just look through the themes, and you're going to see specific things that they're trying to get fixed or, you know, need help with. But there's a level up from that if you just ask yourself, who are they? Yeah. It's like you said, the do-it-yourselfer, the small business, the solopreneurs um, that – maybe doing all of this on their own, pulling the tools that are in around WordPress together to do something and ask yourself, what are they trying to accomplish? Yep. And you'll see it. And mm -hmm. it's it kind of touched on it. But when we get to that level, we can understand that experience is just part of their journey. WordPress is just one part of this, but there's a bigger thing laying on top of that, what they're trying yeah. to get done in their life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's exactly right. But, uh, you know, at CloudFest, uh, we're, we're going to be uh, mostly focused on talking to people who are uh, building tools for WordPress. Um, and so uh, I'm excited about our first episode, whether we call it episode zero or episode one, uh, as a, a great way to kick off this whole discussion with those individuals. Um, and we'll see, uh, we'll, we'll bring in a, a special guest, Kevin Walker, who uh, uh, is doing marketing for a new product. Uh, that automatic and uh, Bluehost released uh, last week called Bluehost Cloud. Um, that was that was big news. I'm glad you mentioned yeah. that. I, I yeah. knew Bluehost. Some of the hosting companies, you know, are going to be there with a heavy presence. But yeah. that was pretty big for me when I saw like I know what you do for with WP Cloud, and then a huge, enormous, and longtime citizen of the community, Bluehost leveraging WP Cloud instead of their own, whatever they might have or do is pretty dang significant. It's telling like there should be ripples here because um, for a company like a Bluehost, which you think in your, like if I put on my entrepreneurial mindset, business mind for a second, you go, you kind of want to own and control as much as you can, lower your cost, but they've embraced obviously through Bluehost Cloud, um, uh, WP Cloud. So yeah. that's yeah. really, really interesting news for me. Yeah. Uh, it's a big step forward. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's a very, very exciting thing. And, uh, you know, for us at, at Automatic, we're very excited about it too, because it's a representation of the, the, the leveraging of our software that we've had for a while. WP Cloud is a, a cloud platform that we built internally at Automatic uh, to service the needs that we have for uh, WordPress.com and for Pressable. It is our... Uh, answer to the big cloud giants out there. 
Uh, we built it for our own needs based on the skills and expertise that we had internally at Automatic, who uh, experienced individuals running WordPress.com and the millions of sites there, VIP, um, Pressable, which is our um, uh, managed WordPress uh, laboratory, uh, R&D uh, hosting company. Um, we know and we work with a variety of users out there and we know that performance and reliability and security are the most important things. And so we said to ourselves, how can we build a cloud platform that will um, really revolutionize uh, the WordPress hosting industry? And so instead of trying to create a global cloud platform, uh, if you look at the big cloud giants out there, I don't even need to mention them. We all know the big three. Um, what are they doing? They're building cloud uh, um, solutions for so many different industries at once, right? There's there's probably 80 plus focuses, everything from warehouse logistics to uh, virtual reality and gaming and website design and, and hosting. Uh, but WordPress makes up a small fraction of that. Whereas WP Cloud is 100% WordPress focused. In fact, it's the only type of website you can even put on the platform. Uh, it's powered by 28 data centers around the globe. And uh, those guardrails that we put up, making it a WordPress first platform, allows for us to do and make decisions on and be opinionated about things like security and performance and, and all that, which makes it so much easier for us to manage the whole platform top to bottom. Um, and in preserve high speeds and, and uptime. And this is what Bluehost recognized in WP Cloud is that it's a fully managed platform. We, we take care of literally everything from your security to your performance, updating WordPress core, uh, plugin management, all of that is handled by the WP Cloud infrastructure. And this uh, allows uh, Bluehost to focus on providing a fantastic uh, experience on top of that. And, you know, you start to see this in the industry where hosting companies, um, you know, we talked about the early innovations of, of, of hosting companies and they could differentiate themselves in technology early on. The fastest WordPress install in, in, in WordPress might have been one specific hosting company. Um, and that was something that was worth touting, you know. But now um, I think that the, uh, the way in which the um, technology that powers hosting companies has evolved it's gotten to a place where it's um, it's not very hard to provide uh, you know uh, boxes to offer you know fast or reliable hosting, um, and so hosting companies uh, would put together these solutions, and then um, if everybody is kind of working on similar tech or ideas of tech, um, then they have to differentiate themselves on the nuances of that, um, um, carving out a few extra or reducing a few extra milliseconds of load time or or some added cool piece of technology to secure your sites, integrating AI, things like that. Um, but I think what we actually saw was that hosting companies were really differentiating themselves uh, through the user experience, uh, the ways in which they communicated to the customer, provided service to them, uh, provided customer support, the partnerships they could leverage to include third-party add-ons or bolt on different services. Excuse me. And so I think it's really interesting when you look at the industry trends and, and the way in which the hosting company is evolving that, um, and the diversity in hosting that we talked about earlier, that hosting companies um, have, uh, have a great opportunity to really kind of focus on uh, customer success again. And I think that is what Bluehost is really doing uh, by leveraging WP Cloud and launching Bluehost Cloud. They're aligning themselves uh, with the success of their customers providing uh, you know, tools specifically built for agencies and professionals to run their business on uh, with clients that um, can see anywhere between you know, a few thousand visitors a day to millions of visitors a day and feel comfortable about it being safe and secure and up uh, with 100% up, uptime guarantee. Um, <clears throat> and then that um, you know, really uh, gives Bluehost the opportunity to kind of continue to innovate on how they can improve those tools and solutions for those customers. Um, so we are combining peace of mind with um, a focus on innovation around uh, the, the tools that you need to save money, to run your business, to help your clients, all that. So that's why I'm, I'm really excited for what's being built there.
And we're going to go way more in depth on it next week too. And that's an example of what we want to do. Our, our thing with impressive posting is the positive toward better. Yeah. And also to highlight companies in the space that are um, truly making a difference and taking steps in the direction to show, Hey, we're a great, we're a press citizen. We want to continue to be, we care about the experience. Bluehost being a recent one, taking a great step in that direction. Not that it has to be, um, not that it has to be necessarily Bluehost or WP Cloud, but that yeah. these things are positive directions. And what you and I put as the intent for impressive hosting is to come together and say, let's highlight the people doing the good, great work that really care about this. So yeah. we'll be talking about other companies and we want to hear those steps that other com hosting companies are taking um, for their customers. You said something so critical there. It's focusing on their customer success, which is yeah. in our, our translation is the WordPress user, the WordPress client, the WordPress agency, or the WordPress developer. Design, whoever touches or needs to, to care about WordPress, whatever that hosting company is focused on, um, mm -hmm. that they are really nailing two things, client, their clients and overall WordPress. And that's going to be the tide that lifts all of this. So yeah. as we go, we'll be collecting these stories and sharing great examples of being that great WordPress hosting citizen. And uh, it's pretty cool. We'll be talking more uh, with Bluehost next week about what they're doing too. And mm -hmm. uh, for those of you in the hosting community, I want to step out in front. I want to showcase what you're doing. Let Jesse and I know um might have you come on as a guest but talk about what you're doing and mention it in some of these and again this is just a part of ringing the bell it's yeah. not one company necessarily that's our part here it's showcasing yeah. bigger need and so we'll be looking forward to talking to kevin next week and can't yeah. wait to hear what you learned too from cloudfest what you're hearing from other people in this vital uh industry part of that really, really obviously is foundational and affects WordPress. So I'm eager to hear what you learn and share those with our listeners for the, our first episode of uh, Impressive Hosting. Yeah, I can't wait. Awesome. All right, friends, safe travels as you go. And for those of you listening, please be sure we'll have a link to the new channel, podcast channel for Impressive Hosting um, in the show notes at postedits.com. So you should subscribe and be a part of that. Well, thanks, Jesse. Yeah, thank you, Corey, and thank you, everybody who's listening. Looking forward to doing this video.